Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with no budget reviews. The series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use do it head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR but we do have a lot of fun. Well, 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 viewers, after no budget reviews, £100 austerity edition, a lot of people have been telling me that they want to see a uh, Mark I Renault Clio on the channel, and, uh, well, here is one. It's actually a very late Phase 1 Mark I Renault Clio. It's a 1994 Clio 1.4 RT. The... Uh, wheels aren't with their original trims and I don't know why my camera is not stabilizing properly well, that's better I do apologize for you so I don't normally use this one for no budget reviews um, because it's to do that sort of thing but there we go the clear was a, a very successful car for, for Renault um, the uh, five before it a later EV super sank which was still in production actually at this uh, at this time um, there's like a budget model normally in this country called the Campus or Campus Prima. Um, and then the Twingo would come out around this sort of time as well. So Renault's sort of small car range was, uh, well, very comprehensive. The uh, Mark Montclair was not based on the 5 platform as far as I know. Uh, the 9 and 11 were based also on that platform. Uh, but this is on its own and... Um, I think it's quite a neat design. I prefer maybe a Clio Bacaga. Uh, they won't call the Monaco for, in our market. The the, the uh, Super Sank 5 Bacaga was called the Monaco over here. Um, but the, this uh, generation, all um, markets had uh, have the same name for the luxury version. In terms of the other trim levels though, oh my gosh, there were a lot of them. We'll be covering them later. I think the might even be more than in the Renault uh, sort of a 205, which uh, was this car's rival actually. Peugeot had introduced uh, the, the 106 uh, before this particular car was made, um, a year after the international launch of the uh, of the Clear, which is in 1990. Uh, we got this car in 1991. Uh, I don't particularly know why, um, but uh, yeah, we got it a little bit later than uh, the continental markets did. This one is for 1.4 RT, and if you've been noticing as we've been walking around the car, 1.4 and RT are actually on separate sides. That's the thing Renault used to do at the time. The Phase 2 Clio came out um, shortly after this car was made, later in 1994, and this will have the 1.4 energy engine. I, I would say energy, but it's spelled energy, so I can't use my French degree properly. Uh, let's have a look in the boot. I think it's been opened. Um, this car has got central locking and it works. One of the things that would attract the average buyer in 91 uh, when this car was launched in this country would have been this boot, which is very, very big for the class. I think the Punto, which came out in 1994, would have been maybe even bigger than this. But yeah, it's very impressive. But also, still got the original carpet there, you can see it's it's actually got the Renault logo on it. I think Renault were based in Swindon at this time actually, as from, from memory, but a lot of their press cars and um, fleet cars registered uh, down in uh, Portsmouth, which is the local area to the port of Southampton where they used to come in. One of the things I've been told by Mr Curry, who owns this car and who supplied a lot of cars with no budget reviews, is every single time you shut the boot, the little string comes out like that. It's, it's, it's really annoying. I haven't actually... Um, Change the position from where he sits, so we'll get in the back. My grandfather's cousin used to have one of these cars. He uh, he was um, from Normandy. He lived in a place called La Bouille, which is near Rouen. And uh, he used to have all sorts of interesting cars back in the day. Uh, but when we used to go down and see him in, in the early to mid-90s, he'd, he'd always have a little clear around. And I think um, 
he had the 1.2 energy engine in his one. So typically, so typically Renault with this time, everything's very soft and you know, you know this sort of pattern is very typical of them and all sorts of things. And even the seat belts, you know, if you know the 80s and 90s Renaults, what they were like, little clip here to uh, put the buckle in if you didn't want it to be actually loose like that. Oh, it would be difficult to put in, so I'm not going to do that. Headroom, it's not the best. It's it's not great. <laughs> it's not good at all. I'm pleased we've got the five-door version, though. It saves me having to do the sort of thing that Mr Manning from Matty's Cars enjoys seeing me do, which is climbing in the back of a... Uh, um, three-door cars that are very small and making, uh, you know, the same noise as Roger Moore did in View to a Kill, which, of course, was produced with the cooperation of Renault. It's quite impressive, actually. This car on this side, it's really weird. On one side, it's got this door pocket. If you don't open the door... Oh, we go. There we go. You can see it's got um, a door pocket. It's quite big. On this side, though, because, uh, well, a lot of people used to smoke in these cars, I think maybe the owner of this car... Um, you when it was a bit, old, a, bit a bit newer, was a smoker. Um, we've got an ashtray there, because of course we have. Because uh, you need somewhere to put your, git your gitan after you've actually finished with them. Let's get into the uh, front. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you can tell the person who owned this car actually smoked. Um, Mr. Curry has told me that this car does need a good clean at some point, and I would agree with him. Also, Mr. Richardson Furious Driving has driven this car as well. Um, whether you'll see his video or mine first on the channel, I don't know. He and I are going to have to sort of uh, work that out, aren't we? Um, whatever or they come out, it'll still be fun anyway, won't it, both of us? So, very, very blue, very sort of early to mid-90s blue interior. My 1997 Mazda 3T3F also used to have a blue interior. It's just typical kind of Renault. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. We've got things in funny places, like the locking switch of the doors is actually down here. And then these typical kind of uh, heater controls that they had, the switches here were just very flat. And this kind of um, cowling on the instrument binnacle is here. Very simple steering wheel. Although we're quite high up the range with this RT model, it still looks very austere in here thing that, that uh, they carried on for years after this was actually hiding the radio underneath of this panel here because radio theft was a big deal at the time um this one's a coded one i think in in renault 11s and things like that some of the radios you actually you could pull the radios out and carry them around in your bag um which itself is a sort of theft risk i suppose this is the early dash in here the uh, phase three cars that came out in 1996 had a different dash from this one and uh, you can see, actually, it's still got the choke warning light. Although this car's fitted with fuel injection, so you'd never see that. And indeed, the really, the really early uh, 1.2 um, energy Clio's had um, the option of a carb, and so you would have seen that uh, that light there. Don't know whether don't know whether the choke would have been, to be honest, in this. I'm not sure. Um, but yes, we've actually got the steering wheel controls there. I think we were introduced from Renault 9 or 11 in the 1980s. And uh, if you look at a 2022 Renault Capture, they've still got this sort of thing on them. It's, it was a very pioneering feature at the time. I believe the radio actually works for this car, so we might actually have a go, although I don't want any copyright infringement. Yeah, massive, massive ashtray, which is nice and clean, actually. Someone's actually cleaned that out, which is, which is good. Cigarette lighter, which has been used. Yeah, no surprise there. Open up my bag and get my secret mission documents out and see if they fit in the very, very strange glove box. The only other car that I know has a glove box that goes like this is a Volvo 440 or 460. Yes! Excellent. Obviously, uh, they knew that other people apart from Roger Moore were going to be using these. So, there we go. Put that in there. RT. Um... The old Renault trim structure was always, you know, the RL, which was low, uh, the RN, which was normal, and then RT, which was at the top. This uh, windy sunroof doesn't work, so we don't touch that. It's typical of cars we here. I think that is actually the infrared sensor for the remote locking. This car actually does have um, a remote key fob on it, but I'm, I think it's probably broken, so the normal locking does work fine. Normal handbrake, of course. This is a five-speed manual. 
uh, you could get an auto, but most of them at this time, particularly in France, would have been a five-speed manual. Um, you know, I don't think Nicole and Papa would have had it any other way. Instrument dimmer switch here, it's interesting in a little cheap car like this. Haven't got front uh, fog lamps. We've got this, I think, is the um, headlamp adjuster or something like that. I think that's the height adjuster for it because the, the lights are actually on here. And of course, if you leave them on and open the door, you get a really annoying buzzer. So, what we'll do is actually just see if the radio works and we'll also see about the gauge next to the engine temperature gauge because that's actually quite interesting. Okay, so. This is the key, you can see it has a button on that side. That remote locking probably doesn't work anymore, I should imagine. Let's put it in. It's hard to do this with uh, go, one hand. Okay, so. Oh, that's tight. All right, okay. There we are. So that is an oil level gauge from what I understand. You can see the picture of a dipstick on there, which is quite common in rotors at the time. As you can see, it's nice and high, so that's good. Right, so we can go and turn the radio on, the ignition's on, let's see what we got. What's up? Oh, okay everyone, this food looks great, but the photos really need... Yeah, that works. Uh, the display doesn't work, but the radio actually works. That's great. Okay, let's uh, look under the bonnet, shall we? So just like on the old five, um, the bonnet actually hinges uh, forward. Um, so it was interesting, yeah, Mach 2 Fiesta was like that as well. There is a stay on there if it's windy, but I'm just gonna hold it. Um, so there you go, you see the engine actually says energy on it. So this particular unit develops about 80 horsepower. I do believe that these are a uh, cam belt unit. Um, if they're not, then don't remind me in the comment section by commenting 10 times like people sometimes do because it gets annoying. That um, <laughs> um, coolant reservoir is very, very sort of old, old Renault, isn't it? Got power steering on this car because it's the RT. Steering is nice and light, actually. I'm going to cast, I think it's a cast iron manifold there, isn't it? Or, or something. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's certainly interesting. So can we see the gearbox? It's always a test of access, yep, we can see it down there. I wouldn't say it's, it's, the, it's the easiest car I've seen from this era to work on, but it's not too bad. Right, let's so shut that. And uh, let's go for a little spin, shall we? Okay, viewers, off we go. So there were masses of engines available in the Mark 1 Clio, tons of them. Um, there were actually three different 1.2 engines available. They all produced between about 54 and about 60 horsepower. First one was a 1.2 version of the um, engine used in this car, the energy engine, and that produced, uh, yeah, somewhere between 54 and 60 horsepower. It depends on like, the year and whether it's got a cat and whether it's got fuel injection or a carb. This car, the um, 1.4 with the energy engine, develops 80 horsepower. Later on, when both those engines were replaced with phase three cars in 1996, the um, power output was lowered to 75 horsepower. Then we had the 1.8, and there were five different power outputs for them. The earlier ones developed um, 89 horsepower. I think that was then dropped to about 86 for the uh, 1996 facelift. The RSI model was this sort of more sporty one. So typically like you know, a Baccarat would get the um, 1.8 um, single point injection, multi-point injection was the RSI that developed either 108 or 106 horsepower after the um, uh, face. Actually, I think actually that got, that got a lower power engine in 1995, it's all very confusing. 
very confusing. I think it was to do with uh, Euro 2 emission regulations that came in in 1997, which is why they changed the power outputs a little bit. There's also the 16 valve, um, which had a 16 valve version of that engine with 135 horsepower. Then right at the top, the Clear Williams 1, 2 and 3, developing 145 horsepower from a 2 litre engine. There are also some diesels available, but as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. What we do talk about is the fact that this car is actually quite pleasant to drive. The engine's quite smooth and it's relatively quiet for a car of this era. There is a bit of wind noise, but then you'd expect that on sort of boxy shape. The gear change is much better than I remember um, 90s Renaults being. This indicator stalk is a bit annoying, but you know, never mind. I feel I've got to say earlier on that there are actually fog lights in the front of this car. I said there weren't, there weren't in the earlier interior section. Obviously, of course, there are because you've seen them. The switches are sort of here and here, so it's a bit confusing. Yeah, the, the, this car actually feels remarkably quick. It's only got 80 horsepower, but because it's so light and small, it feels really fast. I mean, I, I don't know necessarily if I'd, if I'd go for the, uh, you know, carb 1.2. That would probably feel a little bit on the slow side. But this is, this is good. In 1996, this car got what's called the uh, D7F engine for the 1.2. And that actually continued in sort of modified form until like 2017 or something, um, which is absolutely crazy. But yes, this car sort of set a standard when it was, when it was launched in this country in 1991. And I can well understand why so many people all over the place bought these and why they love them so much. Lloyd Lincoln Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. Okay viewers, let's have a look at some Mark 1 Renault Clio trim levels. By gosh, there are a lot of them. So originally when the car was launched, it was uh, RL for bottom of the range, RN for the middle of the range, and RT for the top. That makes perfect sense. But there were also an awful lot of others, and some of them were sub-variants of the main trim levels. So for example, we got the RN Club Med, the RN Zoom, the RN Provence, the R. Um, L Oasis, the RL Paris, the RL Versailles, the RL Panache, and the RT Champs Elysees. We also had uh, the Sport, the S Maxim, the Baccarat, which uh, had a nice leather interior, uh, the Initial, um, just the normal S, the Biarritz, the Night and Day, the Fiji, the Campus, oh, the RL Prima, there's another one, the Bebop, and uh, the Le Routier. The sporty ones were the RSI, the 16 valve, or Cez Soupape if you were uh, in France, and of course the Williams 1, 2, and 3. So, viewers, should you consider a Mark 1 Renault Clio for your hard earned budget up to £1,000? Well, this one's actually a London Ultra Low Emission Zone survival. We're just outside the Ultra Low Emission Zone here, uh, or rather the, the um, projected boundary of it, uh, but it will be in um, August 2023, so we're in Surrey. Um, so this one has is, is been saved, which is which is great. You can pick these up for under £1,000 still. You obviously got to watch Rust. Um, I think these energy and related D-type engines do have a cam belt, so just make sure that that's been done if you're looking at one of those. Um, what the old Cleon font engine, I think, that was in some of these cars is chain driven actually. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. But uh, it's quite a nice car to drive. It's surprisingly comfortable as well. Um, typically, kind of uh, the sort of the sort of the um, country that makes things like this for two hundred five is sort of similar. But I think this is more comfortable than a two hundred five. It's obviously a, a whole design generation later. 
Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed for watching this episode of No Budget Reviews. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like this video, comment below. Thank you again to Mr. Curry for allowing me to uh, drive his car today. And uh, we shall see you again soon for more inexpensive motoring.